What is Radhaswami, the origin of the sacred name Radhaswami, today on this Spiritual Awakening radio podcast? Some rare passages I have rounded up, brought together, and will share today. A few passages you may not have heard of before, may not encounter elsewhere. Some rare research into the origin of the name Radhaswami and background about the founders of the Radhaswami faith. But for the most part, today's program will consist of satsang readings from various masters, spiritual satsang discourses, and some mystic poetry as well. So hopefully something for everyone on today's program, which will for the most part be a Santmat satsang type podcast. I begin with mystic poetry and a few spiritual quotes. This first one comes from Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram. The place where people are always talking about the secrets of the path of Surat Shabad Yoga is true satsang. That is so wonderful. Satsang is always about reminding people to do Simran and to do their meditation. It's not about New Age empowerment or all of the metaphysical rabbit hole discourses people get caught up in. There are so many discourses given around the world. Countless are the spiritual sermons and talks, but very few are actually dedicated to guiding people how to see and hear spiritually. And that is what the true satsang's focus is. The place where people are always talking about the secrets of the path of Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation, is true satsang, says Hazur Maharaj. The following is from the Ghat Ramayan of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. O Jiva, O captive soul somewhere in time, Give up all blind adherences and beliefs. Concentrate within and seek the Supreme Being there, adopting Him alone as your goal. Do ponder over what I say and see for yourself with eyes wide open that there is none in this world whom you can call your own. You should adopt the Supreme Being alone as your prop and support. This is from Guru Kabir. Keep on reciting God's name and you will live pleasantly in the world. With true love as your master, your life map will change. Quite often the saints, including Kabir, will say, God's name is my holy book. God's name is my scripture. Repeat God's name, say the saints. Repeat his name. The following is from a Radhaswami spiritual classic called Phelps Notes by Myron Phelps. The Supreme Father is a vast homogeneous ocean of pure spirit. He is perfect, sufficient in himself, to himself, in an ecstatic state of love and bliss. Before creation, he alone was conscious. There was none but he to see, and none but him to be seen. There was only the Lord immersed in his own rapturous bliss, that limitless reservoir of love which alone was in existence with none to adore or exchange love with him, was an ocean of absolute bliss or ananda. His primary characteristic is love. He is nothing but a vast reservoir of love and bliss. The following is from Nicholas of Cusa. To know the sweetness of the infinite within us. That is the cause, the reason, the purpose, the only purpose of our being. Says Maharishi Mehi Paramahans, Look for and search for God within yourself, within your own body, 
God resides inside. Look for him there. From the Discourses of Babuji Maharaj, Volume 3. Within the innermost recesses, all spirituality is one and has never undergone any division. Our spirituality or soul or surat is an emanation from the Supreme Being. Within the innermost recesses, it is one with the Lord. This is from Swamiji Maharaj, one of his letters to Hazur Maharaj. The Lord in shabd form is always with you and is never far. Have patience and you will get a glimpse of true light. Also from Swamiji Maharaj. If my beloved wishes, he can call me near him in a moment. By means of shabd, he can instantly elevate me. Coming up next, Sant Mat history on the origin, usage, and meaning of the sacred name of God Radhaswami. The sacred name Radhaswami means Lord of the Soul and is considered to be a high holy name of the Most High Supreme Being, residing in the top plane of existence, the Eighth Heaven, called Radhaswami Desh, Anami Lok. The Radhaswami reality, or ultimate reality, beyond universes of form, light, and sound. The formless, soundless, infinite ocean of love in the original state, the true God, Shiv Dayal Singh, also known as Swamiji Maharaj or Sant Radha Swami Sahib, in the 19th century was born into a family of satsangis or disciples of the great Saint Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. This is the context of the Agra satsang that Swamiji Maharaj eventually came to lead. This is from a white paper, the entry for Param Sant Tulsi Sahib in Radhaswami white paper on the religion of Sants and Radhaswami faith, published in Agra, India. Gradually, Tulsi Sahib attracted a large number of followers and disciples from among the high caste Brahmins, as well as the low caste Sudras. They came from the poor classes and also from the affluent. He, Tulsi Sahib, used to visit towns and cities in Uttar Pradesh, and among his disciples were Swamiji's father, his wife, his mother, his mother-in-law, and sister. They were all keen disciples of Tulsi Sahib. Sant Tulsi Sahib used to pay visits to them in Agra, stay at their home in Panagali, and hold satsangs there, unquote. Tulsi Sahib of Hathras was the family guru, and everyone was initiated by Sant Tulsi Sahib. Swamiji's wife as well, and, and, and her side of the family, everyone. All a family and greater family of initiates, followers of the Sant Mat Path, founded by Sant Tulsi Sahib in Hathras and Tulsi Sahib back there in the 1830s and early 1840s would come to Agra and visit the family home there in a section of Agra known as Pandagali. That house served as a kind of headquarters in Agra, a place of satsang for many generations, many decades. This period of time when Tulsi Sahib was visiting 
the home in Panigale, Swamiji's family home in Panigale, would have been in the 1830s and early 1840s. After the passing of Sant Tulsi Sahib in 1843, Swamiji Maharaj became affiliated with a spiritual successor of Sant Tulsi Sahib by the name of Maharaj Gudhari Sahib of Lucknow. Swamiji supported him, attended his satsang for many years, all of them in fact, from 1843 all the way to 1860. He even had a second home in the city of Lucknow. There are reports of Swamiji Maharaj holding private satsangs in his family home in Panigali in Agra as early as the mid-1850s, but it was only after the death only after the passing of Sant Gudhari Sahib during the month of August of 1860 that Swamiji Maharaj went public, opened his doors a few months later in 1861, officially opening his doors and founding his public mission in the city of Agra, initiating many people, developing a major following and a growing satsang center. At first it was known as a Sant Mat Satsang, but in the year 1866 the name Radha Swami was revealed in this group and was adopted as the name of this spiritual path. Thus it became known as the Radha Swami Satsang as of 1866, just a few years after opening its doors after the passing of Gudhari Sahib. I have some podcasts on Sant Gudhari Sahib, the unknown guru of Radha Swami. I have a few podcasts on that topic. Swami is ocean and Radha its first wave. The name Radha Swami. The founders of the faith have a few allegorical interpretations to put forward to explain the two components of the word Radha and Swami. The second guru, Huzur Maharaj Rai Seligram, says that the Supreme Being may be compared to an ocean. A creative ocean cannot be perceived without commotion. The first wave of the endless ocean is Radha. The original current is not different from it, but is identical with the ocean itself. And as it comes out, so it is ever drawn towards it. The creative ocean, therefore, is Swami. And the first original wave, just identical to the ocean, is Radha. The two together form the supreme ocean, full of spiritual bliss and truth. Hence, Radha Swami. Radha Swami faith is the religion of pure and spiritual love. Love denotes two components, the beloved and the lover. The prime source of all love and spiritual energy is the beloved and is therefore known as Swami. The first wave of love and spiritual energy arising from its source and then being attracted towards it again is the lover and therefore is known as Radha. The supreme love is Radha Swami, identifying both the components and fusing them into one. A paragraph from the book Radha Swami Faith, a historical study by Agam Prasad Mathur. On how Radha Swami is this bhakti name, this kind of interesting yin-yang fusion of the feminine soul Radha, and the masculine supreme beloved as Swami. Thus, this is the dance of the lover and the beloved Radha Swami. In the Radha Swami faith, this supreme being is called Radha Swami. The exponents of this faith hold that this holy name has been given out by the supreme being himself. And as it is refulgently resounding within the higher spheres, it can be heard by a person who practices Surit Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation. The second guru, Huzur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur, used to address his guru as Radha Swami Sahib. When Huzur Maharaj practiced the spiritual exercise of Surit Shabad Yoga, 
and attain the highest spiritual truth, he listened internally to the refulgent resonance of Radhaswami incessantly resounding in the first and highest region of creation and found his master identical with the highest spiritual being. He was then filled with divine grace and holy light of love. As such, he addressed him as Radhaswami Sahib and considered him to be the incarnation of the Supreme Being. It was Hazura Maharaj who revealed the name Radhaswami after he realized in his deep meditation practice not only that Swamiji Maharaj was identical with Radhaswami, the Supreme Being, but also that Radhaswami is an ever reverberating sound coming from the highest abode. Again, Prasad Mathur from the book Petals of Love on how Huzur Maharaj discovered the name Radhaswami within. It came from within, was revealed to him from within. Radhaswami Nam was revealed by the Supreme Being himself. When the humble devotees of Swamiji Maharaj, as a result of their successful meditation practices and satsang, came to realize his exalted position and immense spiritual powers, and when he too in his grace and mercy enabled them to recognize him, they started addressing him by the appellation of Radhaswami the name of the original abode from where he made his advent to the world for showering his grace on jiva souls in this Kali Yuga age. That's from the preface of the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. The Santmat Satsang that had been meeting at Swamiji's home in Panagali, Agra, for many, many years started to be called the Radhaswami Satsang beginning in the year 1866. Swamiji tested his disciples and he found that Hazur was capable of spreading his spiritual message. The disciple had realized the master and the master had also recognized the spiritual perfection and glow of the disciple. He recognized in Hazur Maharaj his own spiritual counterpart and on a special request of Hazur, Swamiji Maharaj established the satsang in 1861. In all eternal radiance, Swamiji Maharaj bestowed upon him the most precious and sacred gift, the revelation of the name Radhaswami. It was the name that Hazur gave to Swamiji Maharaj after the inner realization that his guru was identical with the Supreme Being. The object of Hazur's life had been achieved, and he felt contented as never before. Later in 1866, at Hazur Maharaj's stance, Swamiji Maharaj revealed the holy name Radhaswami to his followers. That's a passage found in the book Petals of Love by Agam Prasad Mathur, a book published in English. Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram considered the name Radhaswami something that was revealed to him from within. Hazur Maharaj, the Supreme Lord himself, has revealed this name, Radhaswami. Whoever obtains the secret of this name and putting his faith in Radhaswami repeats this name according to the instructions of the saints, that is, repeats internally or mentally, or listens to the inner sound, will surely be redeemed. This he will realize within himself after a few days of spiritual practice. After a few days of spiritual practice, unquote, Hazur Maharaj, Rai Salagram. The Radhaswami Mat, or faith, derives its name from its original founder, the Supreme Being Radhaswami, who appeared in this world in human form and designated himself Sant Sat Guru, or perfect saint or true guide and preceptor, and preached holy doctrines to the sincere inquirer of truth for the deliverance of their spirit from the bondage and surroundings, as well as from the pains and pleasures of this world, and for the ultimate admission of their spirit entity into the holy presence of the Supreme Being, after traversing and breaking through the trammels and impediments in the material spheres. 
That's a quote from Hazura Maharaj from a great Radhaswami spiritual classic called Radhaswami Mat Prakash, being a message of eternal peace and joy to all nations, originally written by Huzur Maharaj himself in English and published in the year 1897. I should also mention that Radhaswami Mat Prakash was one of the first Sant Mat books to ever reach the United States and Canada back at the early uh, decade, or to the early decade, certainly, of the 20th century. The five names are Panchnam versus the name Radhaswami. Six very important sacred names in the path of Radhaswami coming up next. The five names are secret mantra names, sacred names of God that are revealed to candidates for initiation at the time of their diksha, at the time of their initiation. These names are used by many in the various branches of the Indian-based spiritual path known as Sant Mat, including in some branches of Radhaswami. There are a few in the Radhaswami faith that use both the five names and the name Radhaswami. While the five names have been around for centuries, part of the vocabulary of the Sant tradition in the Dharamdas Kabir lineage, the holy name Radhaswami first came into usage in the year 1866. And there are also branches of the Radhaswami Satsang that do not use the five names as Simran words now, but only the name Radhaswami. So in other words, there are a few different schools of thought regarding sacred names, mantras, the performance of Simran, and which names to use for Simran. On the five names versus Radhaswami, all of the branches of Radhaswami, as I see it, have a legitimate basis for their approach and precedent based on Swamiji earlier in life and Swamiji later on in life. Baba Jaimal Singh, for instance, was initiated into the five names by his spiritual master, Swamiji Maharaj, back in the mid-1850s. Swamiji no doubt received the five names from his initiating guru, Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras. Sant Tulsi probably was initiated into the same five names and Surat Shabad Yoga by his guru, and so on. Another successor of Swamiji Maharaj by the name of Maharaj Garabdas, of the Delhi Satsang, the Radhaswami Satsang Delhi, initiated much later than Baba Jaimal Singh, embraced both the five names and the name Radhaswami, and his branch of Radhaswami represents a kind of middle path, if you will, between the two other main schools of Radhaswami, one using the five names, the other now only using the name Radhaswami. He says, the word is Swami, and Surat is Radha, and this dar of Surat that turns back and merges into the Shabd, or word, sings Radha Swami. When you sing the name Radha Swami, you do the Simran of the five names. Unquote. That's a verse from Sant Garabdas's book Anmol Bhajan. In the Rohila Delhi Satsang founded by Sant Garabdas, they repeat the five names plus the name Radha Swami, the six names, if you will. Perceiving that the five names and the name Radha Swami are interchangeable. And that understanding is based on a hymn of Swamiji Maharaj from his Sarbachan Radha Swami poetry, where Swamiji was saying that name number one is, is Radha Swami operating at the level of the astral plane. Name number two is Radha Swami, the Lord of the soul, the one God, operating at the level of the causal plane, and so on. The fifth name is Radha Swami operating at the level of Satlok, and so on. In other words, as Guru Nanak says in his morning prayer, the Japji, Ek Unkar Satnam, there is one God. Truth is his name. And so for Swamiji and the Radha Swami masters, Radha Swami, the Lord of the soul, the one God, is the Lord of all spirits, the Lord of all surats, 
living in all the various realms of creation. There is one God operating on all planes of consciousness, though called by many names. And the Agra Radha Swami Satsang branch, affiliated with Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram, his lineage, does not use the five names, but only Radha Swami. As of the year 1866, in Swami Ji's Satsang, the name Radha Swami came to be. Thus, Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram has a solid basis for his approach as well, which was the use not of the five names, but the newly revealed name. Radha Swami. So the satsang affiliated with Baba Jaimal Singh uses the five names, but it also has great reverence for the name Radha Swami. Sant Garabdas takes a kind of middle ground, and his satsang reveres both the five names and the sacred name Radha Swami as Simran words. And of course, the Agra satsang teaches Radha Swami name the name Radha Swami or Radha Swami Nam, that Radha Swami is the Simran word, the sacred name to be repeated at all of the stages of meditation practice. Different schools of thought, but all highly revere the name Radha Swami, all call their satsang the Radha Swami satsang, and all use the greetings of Radha Swami. Examples of the use of the name Radha Swami by Baba Jaimal Singh and Huzur Baba Sawan Singh Ji. Baba Jaimal Singh and Huzur Baba Sawan Singh initiated souls using the five names, the Panch Nam, but they also referred to the spiritual path as the Radha Swami Satsang, and as is the custom in Agra, Satsangis greet one another by saying Radha Swami. Like Hawaiians might use the word Aloha, used both as a greeting or when departing. It's a beautiful custom used by all that continuously reminds everyone of the Supreme Being and promotes remembrance of the spiritual path. Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami. Sant Das Maheshwari in his letters, uh, uh, Sant Das Maheshwari quotes, uh, in one of his books. In his letters, Baba Jaimal Singh has used the word Radha Swami 1,281 times. Spiritual Letters of Baba Jaimal Singh. The following is excerpted from a letter of his to Hazur Baba Sawan Singh from letter 118 of Spiritual Letters, where Baba Jaimal Singh mentioned to Hazur Baba Sawan Singh about repeating the five names plus the name Radha Swami every day. Quote, Now I write to you a little about Paramath, or spiritual practice. When you are free from work and have leisure, develop the condition of the mind which enjoys deep sleep. Particularly just before going to sleep, see that there is no worldly desire or any kind of desire in the mind. Then repeat the names. Then repeat the word Radha Swami. Go on putting Surat and Nairat in the dun and listen to the sound with love and devotion of the Nijman and with an intense longing. And you will feel the bliss of the dun or sound, the sound current. You may not be able to keep the attention there for long, but you will enjoy the bliss. Practice this every day whenever you have time or leisure." Unquote. So that's an interesting way to fall asleep, isn't it? You know, do a, a bit of Simran just before falling asleep. And here he was saying five names, the names, and the word Radha Swami, which is in, interesting to read, interesting to find in the writings. Baba Jaimal Singh, an excerpt from a letter to Hazur Baba Sanwan Singh Ji. Now that your house is ready, you should move into it. 
First, you should read five shabs or hymns from the Hazuri Pathi of the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. Then let all the satsangis chant aloud, Radhaswami, Radhaswami, for five minutes. Then think in your mind that Hazur Swamiji is sitting on a bed or on a seat in the room. Then for 15 minutes, sit in bhajan, meditating on the sound current. If that is not possible, then repeat the Simran for the same period. Then remove the bed or seat and occupy the house. Please take the above to be my firm directions. Unquote. Baba Jaimal Singh, guiding Hazur Baba Sawan Singh on a spiritual housewarming. What a great way to move into a new house. You know, chanting the name Radhaswami, meditating on the sound for 15 minutes or so, visualizing Swamiji sitting there on the bed or in a chair somewhere. That's quite a spiritual housewarming, moving into your new home, going in in a spiritual kind of way. Master Sawan Singhji sometimes asked the newcomers to repeat the word Radhaswami before they were given regular initiation. That's a quote from Sant Kripal Singh Ji. An example of this. This is from a letter to uh, a disciple or follower, a spiritual seeker. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh writes, as to any exercises which might help you until the time of your initiation, I can only suggest at this time that you may sit in meditation in a quiet place like your own bedroom or some room as secluded as possible and with spine and body erect in a comfortable position, fix all of the attention at the center, just back of the two eyes and slowly repeat the word Radhaswami fixing the mind on the Supreme Being who is your Supreme Father." Unquote. What a beautiful paragraph from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. Also from Sawan Singh in an original copy of A Letter to a Satsangi, he once wrote, When you see any form inside, then repeat the five names and Radhaswami. Unquote. Simran means remembrance of God, practicing the presence of God by repeating sacred names of God or a sacred name, the prayer of the name. The Sufis call it zikr. Simran of the names of the respective regions can also be performed, but the Simran of Radhaswami Nam will be very easy of performance. It will vouch safe help and the path will be traversed at a rapid pace. This is the name before which Kal and Maya tremble. Kal and Maya are rendered impotent and helpless before this name or Nam. This Nam is the supreme mantra. That's a quote from the discourses of Babuji Maharaj. The following is from Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur. All obstacles thrown in the way and traps laid by universal mind and matter to stop or interfere with the progress of a pilgrim to the high mansion of the Supreme Being in pure spiritual regions disappear at once on the pronunciation of the holy name Radhaswami by the devotee. Such is the immediate effect and beneficial influence exercised by this almighty name. It at once strikes awe and terror in the heart of conflicting agents and revolting forces meet with by the devotee while traversing the material regions and gradually removes them altogether from his path. Sarbachand Radhaswami poetry of Swamiji Maharaj. Swamiji composed a huge collection of hymns known as the Sarbachand poetry for his new Radhaswami satsang in Agra 
And, of course, it's brimming with the name Radhaswami on practically every page. Radhaswami has made us sing the song of Radhaswami. I keep singing Radhaswami with enthusiasm. Day and night I sing Radhaswami, Radhaswami, Radhaswami. My mind is now absorbed in the bliss of love. I sing Radhaswami, Radhaswami, Radhaswami. I attain the wealth of Nam, the wealth of Nam, the wealth of Nam. I now sing Radhaswami Nam all the twenty-four hours. Go on singing the holy name Radhaswami. Develop love and faith. The following is from the biography of Swamiji Maharaj by Chachaji Lala Pratap Singh. In the year 1877, there was a great famine due to failure of rains. Many people of the village of Sabsukha came to Swamiji Maharaj and related their woes. They prayed for rain, for otherwise they said their cattle would die of starvation. Swamiji Maharaj kept mum, but Vishnoji said to them that rain would fall the next day and asked them to go away. When they had gone, Swamiji Maharaj said to Vishnoji that there was no ordainment for rain. She ought not to have forecast rain without his permission. She submitted, O Swamiji Maharaj, as I have given word, it must now rain. Swamiji Maharaj asked all those present to sit down on the nearby platform and go on repeating, Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami. The sadhus and satsangis started repeating Radha Swami Nam in chorus. After some time, there was a little rain. Swamiji Maharaj cautioned Vishnuji against such utterances in future. He said that there was only that he said that it was only for her sake that it had rained. Otherwise, the supreme being had ordained there would be no rain. Unquote. So here he is saying, don't use this superpower again. <laughs> don't, don't repeat this again. Fascinating, beautiful, and fun. Swamiji Maharaj composed a collection of hymns, as I mentioned, for his new Radha Swami satsang that heavily includes the name Radha Swami throughout. It says in the book Radha Swami Faith, a historical study by Agam Prasad Mathur, Swamiji's books clearly reveal the might of his pen and force of his argument. His verse composition is known as Sarbachan Chandband. His poems are replete with emotional appeal, a successful blending of popular poetic expressions from different languages of northern India. The original manuscripts of Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry are preserved at Hazuri Bhavan Pipalmandi in Agra, it is a collection of Hindi hymns of the first guru, Swamiji Maharaj, which he composed between 1866 and 1878. Some of the hymns contain the actual dates of their composition. The manuscripts written in Urdu bear the first guru's signature in Urdu. In January 1884, the second guru got these printed in book form after arranging them in order of different topics and classifying the whole matter into 42 chapters." Unquote. Originally, as I recall, there was a single volume Sarbachan Radha Swami poetry that was circulating, but eventually it was divided into two smaller volumes and published. That original one volume Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry is also at Huzuri Bhavan, and I have a couple of photos of it. <laughs> Radhaswami Nam, whosoever recites, gets across the ocean of life. Troubles vanish, bliss abides, and gones complete all strife, it says in the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. Coming up next, more readings on the power of the name Radhaswami, the Lord of the Soul. Mm-hmm. 
chanting the name Radhaswami. You have to walk with me, with my spirit, with my radiation. Receive my radiation first, then you can enjoy every radiation with right understanding and without being submerged and drowned in the current of attraction and repulsion they call maya or illusion. Always carry my reflection, my aura or reflection is the sum total energy and my spirit of the universe. I am all strength and courage. I am all love and mercy. I am the potential of all talents. I am the source of all riches. I am the light of all wisdom. I am the truth of all truths. All exist in me as they are part of me and I exist in all of them. They are nothing but me. You will see that I am vibrating everywhere, not only as light waves, but also as sound waves, as the creative force, as the procreative force, as the force of all expansion. I am the creative force, Ra. I am the expansion force, Da. I come back with all the vibrations, Swam. I become again one with you all, and you feel one with me as E, Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami. Chant this name. It is me in sound form. Enjoy me in sound form as the magnetic field of love. That's a poem on the name Radha Swami found in the Discourses of Sri Mentu Maharaj, Volume 1. The following is from Prem Bani Radhaswami of Hazur Maharaj, the hymns of Hazur Maharaj. The Supreme Father Radhaswami Dayal, the compassionate, merciful Lord of the soul, loves you dearly. He will redeem you in a moment. Believe what I say is true. Know that Radhaswami is your true beloved. His heart is overflowing with compassion for souls. He imparts them his own strength and redeems them. Have no anxiety or worry in your mind now. Utter Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami, Radha Swami. Every moment, always utter Radha Swami, the name of the merciful Supreme Being. Then only will mind and call become powerless against you. Radha Swami is my most beloved Lord. None other than Him comes to mind. I sing praises of Radha Swami again and again, and shall remain at His holy feet, ever alert and vigilant. I discard all the evil tendencies of the mind and enshrine Radha Swami Nam in my heart. I sing Radha Swami, Radha Swami every moment. That's from Prem Bani Radha Swami, Volume 1, a collection of hymns, Bhakti hymns of Hazur Maharaj. Raisalagran. From the Sarbachan, coming up next, the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry. Radhaswami has imparted a unique message. The moment I utter the word Radhaswami, all my doubts and misgivings are dispelled. Radhaswami has taken me in his lap. Radhaswami will also redeem you. Repeat the word, the holy word, Radhaswami, all the time. Recite Radhaswami all the twenty-four hours. Radhaswami dwells in my heart every moment. That's from Sarbachan Radhaswami Poetry, Book One. Satsang. Satsang means true spiritual association with the master, with the living master and his lineage. Satsang is association with the master or a sad, a sadhu, a virtuous satsangi. And the guru or sad should be a follower of the religion of sants, i.e. the Radhaswami faith, Sant Mat. In such a satsang, there will be no mention of quarrels, disputes, stories, worldly entanglements, and such other things, 
only the following matters will be dealt with. One, glory of Sat Purush, the compassionate Radha Swami, God, the Lord of the soul, the secrets of the path of the various stages and the methods of traversing the path. Two, methods of developing love for and faith in the feet of merciful Radha Swami and the Master. Three, engendering in one's mind of the condition of indifference to and detachment from the world and its enjoyments. Four, description of those obstacles which the mind and maya or illusion create to prevent a practitioner from proceeding on the path. Five, description of the experiences which the meditation practitioner gets at the time of initiation and at the time of satsang and his meditation practice. And six, description of the ascent of the spirit to higher regions and the conditions therein. That's from Radhaswami Mat Prakash. Also from the teachings of Hazur Maharaj, devotional practices. It should be noted that all of the following activities are included in devotional practices. One, Simran, the repetition of the holy name. Two, Simran and Dion, repetition of the holy name along with contemplation of the holy form. Three, Bhajan, listening to the sound current. Four, recitation of holy books or listening to their recital in satsang intelligently. Five, discussing the principles of the Radhaswami faith or listening to such discussion. Six, thinking about and reflecting on matters pertaining to the Radhaswami faith and its practices and pondering them. And seven, examining the ways of one's mind and senses daily, keeping them under control as far as possible, unquote. Huzur Maharaj, Prem Patra Radhaswami, Volume 1. Number seven being the self-introspection stage to pay attention to on the path of the masters. Ocean, God, wave, the master, Sant Sat Guru, and drop, the soul. The relationship between the Supreme Being and the master and Jiva souls has well been compared with ocean, its wave, and the drop. The Supreme Being is the ocean of all bliss, light, life, sound, and truth. The Guru, the Master, is the wave which is always in union with the ocean and not different from it. And the Jiva, soul, with the same attributes is a drop far away from the ocean. This contact between the drop and the wave is the true bhakti, path of love. Therefore, emphasis has been laid upon establishing contact between the Master and the disciples at all levels, that is, physical, mental, and spiritual. This contact would be developed through the company of the Master, both internal and external. The external company of the Master is called the external satsang, and the internal company of the shabd form of the Master is called the internal satsang. There are four sats, four eternal truths. There are four essentials on which this faith bases its tenets. The four sats are 1. Sat Guru, the Master. 2. Satsang, true spiritual association, community. 3. Sat Anurag, true love, true bhakti. And 4. Sat Nam, the true name, or Sat Shabd, true sound. By the seva, a service, and the satsang, true association of the master, the spirit entity or soul would slowly and slowly shake off the coverings, sheaths, subtle bodies, and would be able to catch the sound currents and one day reach the ultimate abode. The whole process may take a period of four lives, which may be shortened in the case of more ardent devotees. For the attainment of perfect salvation, the Radhaswami faith, like all other Sant sects, 
shuns all other paraphernalia and external observances and rituals. It has emphasized upon the pure love in the holy feet of the Supreme Being and the Master. As such, it denounces hatred and discrimination among the human beings. All are children of the One Father, and as such there is no place for a discrimination in point of caste, creed, or color, and thus cannot check one to adopt this faith. According to the Radhaswami faith, women are entitled to enjoy the same privileges as men. They also can practice Surat Shabad Yoga and gain high spiritual attainments. The champions of this enlightened faith advocated in social setup of the 19th century the removal of the purda system for the ladies and urged them to come out of the narrow social restrictions and respond to the call of the time. Moreover, their preachings strengthened the disintegrating Hindu society by effacing the false barriers of caste prejudices, unquote. Again, Prasad Mathur from the book Petals of Love. Actually, over the centuries, uh, the Sant movements have always been against the caste system, have always been social justice movements, freeing souls from various degrees of oppression and tradition, discrimination, restriction, caste systems, that sort of thing, rites and rituals and barriers of one sort or another. Again, Prasad Mathur from Petals of Love. Great emphasis has been made by the Masters on the generation of love for the Supreme Being, the Supreme Master, who is all love. Love is the prime source of boundless energy. Love is bliss, and thus the Supreme Being is supreme bliss. Love is light and truth, and from them emanates intelligence. Thus the Supreme Being is an infinite ocean of bliss, intelligence, energy, truth, and light. He is eternal and unchangeable, the sole director of the whole creation. Such a supreme being is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. He is all-pervading. The entire universe is the creation of his own current, and as such he is present at every stage in the creation." Unquote. The sole purpose of the incarnation of the Supreme Being as Satguru is to redeem the jiva souls from the cycle of transmigration, the transmigratory cycle, uh, the transmigratory cycle of births and deaths, to reveal to them the efficacy of Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation, and to engender into them the true and sincere love for the Supreme Being. Through practicing Surat Shabad Yoga with love and bhakti, or devotion, one is able to attain true salvation. One does not have to forego one's worldly duties for this practice, which can be performed by anyone, whether young or old, male or female. The key ingredients of this faith are love and devotion. More quotes from Petals of Love. In a nutshell, the Radhaswami faith is a gospel of love, Love towards the holy feet of Radhaswami Dayal, compassionate, merciful, Lord of the soul. Love towards the master of the time and love with all the human beings is its cardinal message. The practice of Srit Yoga is dependent on the love generated in the devotee's heart for the supreme being Radhaswami Dayal. The Radhaswami faith, or Sant Mat, therefore advocates the blending of yoga with bhakti, meditation and love. That is from Petals of Love. Coming up next, the cosmos is a symphony of vibrating currents or strings.
This is from Prem Patra Radhaswami, The Love Discourses of the Lord of the Soul, just to translate that into English. By Hazur Maharaj, Rai Salagram. The cosmos is a symphony of vibrating currents or strings. The entire creation is composed of currents. The various bodies are made up of currents, threads or wires. Just as cloth is made from threads or as the branches and twigs of a tree are but clumps of fibers, so is the human body made up of thread-like nerves through which currents pass. This is how all physical bodies are made. When a person speaks, his voice becomes audible by means of currents. Similarly, it is by the currents of sight or light that we see the world. When there was no universe, the first thing that happened, the first cause, was that a current issued forth from the feet of the Supreme Being, compassionate Radhaswami. This current is the current of Shabda, mystic sound, and of life and light. The entire creation of all the regions, planes, spheres, dimensions, higher or lower, has been brought into existence by this current. The seat of the Supreme Being, Radhaswami Dayal, is within everybody. The spirit currents descended from him created Dayal Desh, the merciful region, the spiritual realm, Brahmanand, universal mind, and Pind, or Pinda, physical plane, material universe, or multiverse. From a center inwards, in between the two eyes, where the spirit has taken its location, the third eye center, seat of the soul, wisdom eye, it is supplying energy by means of currents to the mind and the senses and the entire frame. Between the two eyes, where the current has taken its location in this body, seat of the soul, third eye, wisdom eye, it is supplying energy by means of currents to the mind and the senses and the entire frame. As the spirit current alone is the current of bliss, pleasure and knowledge, it is only on account of it that all those having physical bodies experience pleasure and relish it through the sense organs. Whoever is desirous of reaching the source of this current, which is the fountainhead and reservoir of all bliss, all pleasure, all knowledge, to obtain supreme bliss and eternal happiness should revert to its source, i.e. the feet of the Supreme Creator, Radhaswami, with the help of this very current, unquote. This is from Anurag Sagar, The Ocean of Love, a Dharam Dasi text. If a person adopts a master and having faith in him gets initiated, does meditation with devotion, then he can become a Hans, a heavenly bird, a pure soul. Such an attainment is priceless. His master will take him step by step to Sanhalsdal Kanwal, Trikudi, Daswandwar, Banwar Gufa, Sach Khand, and after a short stay to Alak, Agam, and Anami Desh, which is the highest eternal region the ultimate abode, Anurag Sagar, the ocean of love. Resting in the protection of Radhaswami Dayal, the merciful lord of the soul, one should give up all fears, worries, doubts, and revelries. Relying on his mercy, one should become free from care and anxiety. It is only when one becomes carefree in respect of this region that one will be able to perform arti, worship, meditation, this is what the cushion of a carefree state means, unquote. That's from the discourses of Babuji Maharaj, describing an ideal spiritual life in this world as we calmly stare at the monsters and dragons that the physical plane is constantly offering us. And yet we should remain in a carefree state state free of anxiety. Wow. Seriously. The art of living a spiritual life. Here in Pindadesh, the physical plane. Or as the ideal is put forward in the, in the Adi Granth, the Gurbani of the Sikhs, you know, to be fearless is a sign of true spirituality. 
Not an easy thing to do in this plain of monsters and distress at every turn. Samsara, world of changes, world of illusion or maya. And yet there it is. Be fearless, carefree, free of anxiety. Develop a carefree state of being, even while residing in this plane of consciousness through the power of the name. Wrapping up today's edition of this Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio, a couple of verses. This is from Darya Sahib, but not Darya Sahib of Bihar, but another Sant Darya, Sant Darya Sahib of Marwar. Darya meditates on the one Lord and thereby resolves all problems, mundane and spiritual. And finally, wrapping up today's program, and thank you for joining me. Full circle we come back to Myron Phelps from Phelps Notes. Myron Phelps, a disciple of Babuji Maharaj, who traveled to Agra to the satsang there. The Supreme Father is a vast, homogeneous ocean of pure spirit. He is perfect, sufficient in himself to himself, in an ecstatic state of love and bliss. Before creation, he alone was consciousness. He alone was conscious. There was none but he to see and none but him to be seen. There was only the Lord immersed in his own rapturous bliss that limitless reservoir of love which alone was in existence, with none to adore or exchange love with him, was an ocean of absolute bliss or ananda. His primary characteristic is love. He is nothing but a vast reservoir of love and bliss. Myron Phelps, Phelps Notes. Radha Swami.